Let's get physical, it's Jordan here, back again with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the second week of September, the 5th until the 9th. Let's take a look at this week's releases. Temtem is releasing physically this week on the Nintendo Switch. While this is a highly anticipated game, amongst the slew of Pokemon wannabes that we've had on the Switch recently, I think this one may capture the imagination the most. Mainly because it's an online game, yes, other people wandering around the same world, catching Pokemon, I mean, Temtem and battling. It's a love letter to Pokemon, what with having to fight 8 gym leaders before becoming the ultimate champion. Will it work properly considering it's the full launch of the game after being in early access for years? I don't know. But I did have massively high hopes for this one, except when I found out that it has battle passes, of which it can now smeg off. I absolutely can't stand battle passes, seasons, whatever, bullshit. That's one way to make me lose interest in a game immediately especially one that's full priced, but hey, I'm sure they'll make a billion dollars out of it. And our executive producer Issa has chosen this as their pick of the week. Fist Forged in Shadow Torch is releasing physically this week in the West. Well, at least in Europe, maybe North America is next week. This is a side-scrolling action game where you control a pissed off rabbit. Why is he pissed off? Probably because he's a rabbit. I would be. Or is he a hare? Or does it even matter? No, because he's got a giant mechanical arm and he can smack people with it. This looks like a decent enough time if you're into side-scrolling action games. It's been out physically in Asia for quite a while already, so some of you may already have this one. But if not, grab it this week. And our executive producers Grantsert and Boombox have chosen this as their pick of the week. White Day, a labyrinth named School, is a Korean survival horror game, the second remake of a cult classic. It was originally a game only on PC in Korea, but in 2017 it was remade for modern consoles. And now, five more years later, it's coming to the Switch. I hadn't heard of this game until now, but I tell you what, this looks like my kind of schlock. For sure it looks a bit dated, but considering I've just been playing Silent Hill, which is just as effective as a horror as it always was, it does... graphics don't mean jack. This could be pretty good. You enter a school at midnight but end up being caught in a game of life and death, being hunted down by the janitor in a stalker-like situation. That can go either way, depends just how they make it. I hated it in The Coma, for example, but it worked great in Resident Evil 2. Just depends how balanced it is. But of all the horror schlock that's come out recently, one of which I'll mention soon, this is the one I'd probably pick up. Splatoon 3 is releasing this week, one for those with squid fetishes, although they are kids, so be sure to check in at your local police station after you've picked this up at Best Buy. Splatoon 3 is going to sell 20 million units, it's going to be huge for a few weeks around the world and then it's going to taper off like Splatoon 2 did, which is weird because it's such an amazing gameplay loop. The big question is, is it worth the sequel or would this have been better served as DLC? It's a question that I really don't know the answer to, but it's hard to feel how they could have shaken things up more to make it feel like a brand new separate product. We'll have to see. I love Splatoon, really I do. I loved 1, loved 2, amazing addictive gameplay that kind of gets ruined once people start taking it too seriously. Yeah, you know who you are, just paint the goddamn floor, have fun. And our executive producers Dane Wilkinson, Elisa, Punky Duster, Robotech and Jonathan Rumor have chosen this as their pick of the week. NBA 2K13, no, what am I on about? NBA 2K23 is releasing on the Switch this week. Slam that ball onto the ground a few times and then pop it in that inconveniently high net. It makes perfect sense for a sport. Of all the North American sports, it's my, it was my second favorite, I guess. And that's all I have to say about this. I should probably pay some like American dude to write up these American sports sections up and then me just narrate it in sort of an American accent. That would go really well. Anyways, basketball people, are you hyped about this? Or are you hyped about me in my terrible American accent? Okay, Oxide Room 104 should be releasing in North America this week. It should be out in Europe already. This is one of a handful of horror games that's been coming out recently. We just had Madison as well. It looks alright, but I'd definitely plump for P-Cube's White Day all day long. Road Redemption. Look, I feel almost embarrassed for mentioning this one this week, since this physical has been a placeholder for about, ooh, three years, I think. Maybe, just maybe, it could actually be happening this week. And if it doesn't, 
I will just pretend it doesn't exist. This is an indie take on the classic road rash formula. It doesn't always work out so nicely, but since EA have no desire to make anything other than sports games these days, then this is as good as you're gonna get. Although, a nice retro collection of Road Rash wouldn't go amiss. I would buy the shit out of that if it had all the versions on it. Road Rash is great. Such good fun. It was on the Mega Drive, right? I think I played it at my cousin's and I was like insanely jealous about it. Forget Sonic. Forget Golden Axe. Road Rash. I wanted that. You could beat people over the head with a steel pipe. Wonderful. Alright, The Low Prince. Miracle Snack Shop is Play Asia's latest Switch exclusive, but this time, this time, it's their very own product. Yeah, previously they've worked with East Asia Soft to bring exclusive games to their website, but now they've taken it upon themselves to become a fully-fledged publisher. Getting things done on their own. Their first game, Game 001, is Miracle Snack Shop. This is a visual novel business management sim. Quite highly rated in the visual novel community, it's not the longest game by any means, but most of these management ones aren't overly long, but there's lots of room for replayability as you try to manage your very own snack shop with jailbait anime girls. The collector's edition is limited to just 3,000 copies at Play Asia, and it's a very reasonable price compared to what most other limited companies do, with a nice soundtrack, acrylic standee, and some I'm heading to jail postcards. The standard edition is a open pre-order, and pre-orders are open right now. Yes, the exact same time this video went out, pre-orders opened. Thanks Play Asia, maybe just wait like an hour extra after this video. Just do me a favor, that would be nice. And if you want to order this like myself, then please check the links in the description and the pinned comment. If you click those links and buy it, you will also support Switchwatch ever so much. Plus, of course, you can get a very nice 5% off with our current discount code STEENBOK. That's all one word, STEENBOK for 5% off. But remember to click the link first, that is how to really support us. And of course, it's free shipping over 100 bucks. And our executive producer Cartoon Soren has chosen this as their pick of the week. Now here's a question for you, since I do have a fair bit of contact with the people at Play Asia, please let me know which games you would like to see them tackle. But, you know, please remember this is not just physical releases. They're also wanting to work with Asian developers, especially to port games to newer consoles, newer releases, even translate games as well. So, which games would you like to see them do? Try to keep it within the remit, don't say like Alien Isolation, since that probably won't be in their sort of bag. Asian games, perhaps even classic games they could bring back to life, translations, such like that, I would be happy to pass on the information. And maybe they will give me a job to do that as well. I don't know. Hmm. Inked! A Tale of Love is Red Hot Games' latest Switch release. This is a gorgeous looking game, drawn with a ballpoint pen kind of vibe going on. This is doodling done right, I really like it. The gameplay looks a little bit simple perhaps, a more casual style puzzle game with a focus on the narrative. It will probably take a couple of hours to get through so it's not a huge time investment either. You can pre-order this right now and if you want to order it from redhotgames.com, Please use our discount code SWATCH10 for 10% off. We don't earn anything, that's just something for you guys. Necro Barista is pretty much what happens at every Starbucks I've been to after the barista spells my name D-O-N instead of D-A-N. Does it look like I have hateful parents? Don't answer that. I guess you don't need that kind of awareness working in Starbucks. All you need is a tattoo sleeve and at least one piercing in an ill-advised place. Sorry, I guess I'm just cranky that this game has popped up after I've recently given up coffee. No more four cups a day, even though I I really wish I could. Never mind, this is Super Rare's latest Switch release. It's a stylish visual novel style game, although perhaps not made with the usual audience in mind. It tries to be very cinematic with camera pans and models always changing position. Quite dynamic for the genre, even though the expressions are a bit over the top for me. It looks alright though. I heard the premise is better than the actual writing. So, yeah, whatever. There are 4,000 copies available on Thursday. Don't miss out. And our executive producers, Parsnip Coffee, God of Resin, Fawn Metaluna, and Jennifer M have chosen this as their pick of the week. 
The Journey Down Trilogy is Strictly Limited Games' latest Switch release. This is a triple pack of point-and-click style adventure games with an Afro-Caribbean twist to them, which means it's cool. These are very positively received games with humour and puzzles, but not brain-busting enough to make you scream. It looks like a proper adventure and I really like the vibe they're giving off. There's a standard edition and a collector's edition. It's a bit pricier than their normal standard releases. Shame they couldn't have brought it down a little bit. I think 40 euros is maybe a bit of a hard sell, I don't know. And our executive producer Brent McLean has chosen this as his pick of the week. Dodon Party Resurrection is Limited Run's biggest game this week, a game that's no doubt going to please a lot of people. Of the trilogy of smups they've done recently, this is going to be the biggest of the bunch. We had Musahime-sama and Espgaluda, and now we've got the big daddy Dodon Party. It's a pity they went in a triple pack, but hey, those millionaires gotta eat. Five Guys doesn't pay for themselves. It's also pretty snidey of them to do this pre-order pretty much straight after the pre-order for Escaluda ended. As though people wouldn't have bought them together. Especially for people not in North America, shipping prices are just ridiculous for some places in Europe. They should have been up for pre-order at the same time. Literally no reason not to unless they hoped Europeans would bundle other games with them to make the shipping more worth it. Which uh, I'm pretty sure is actually the case. And our executive producer, Instacritic, has chosen this as his pick of the week. Ninth Dawn 3 is Limited Run's second game this week. This is an open world RPG going for an old school vibe. It's real time, but I've seen comparisons to both Diablo and Ultima. There's lots of positivity about this one, even if it kind of looks a bit unappealing visually. Plus, it looks like a migraine waiting to happen. It looks busy as shit. Expect hack and slash gameplay with lots of content, you can even get the monsters to fight alongside you. And there's even a card game made specifically for this game. Is it as good as Triple Triad though? Impossible. Alright the imports, remember guys, if any of them take your fancy, then check the links in the description and the pinned comment. You can pre-order them and support us at the same time. And of course, 5% off with the code STEAMBOK. That's going to run out at the end of this month, so be wary. Airport Hero is, for me, the greatest import of all time. Well, that may be a slight exaggeration, but I am worryingly excited for this airport simulator. Don't mind me being strange. Here you don't take control of the planes themselves, as far as I'm aware, but you control the airport. Direct the planes which route to take on the tarmac. Watch them take off. Watch them land. Fingers crossed nothing blows up. Immensely boring shit like that, and I am going to enjoy every single second of it. One for the Anorak wearers out there. High five! It has English, and there's no Western physical release, so it's an import exclusive. Don't miss out. And our executive producer, Precision Plague, has chosen this as their pick of the week. The Card Perfect Collection is the perfect card collection. Here you get a bunch of card games in one cheap package. Ten games, including Hearts, Texas Hold'em, Solitaire, and things like that. All of them have English. It's easy to take the piss out of something like this, but it's genuinely a rather harmless package just because of how cheap it is. Very reasonably priced for a physical import. And our executive producer Vey has chosen this as his pick of the week. There's also Alice Gears Ages CS Concerto of Simulatrix and Adventures Academia uh, The Fractured Continent. I was going to say The Fractured Butthole then, but it's not. Re they're both releasing in Japan this week, but they don't have English. However, I know the latter one is due for a Western release sometime next year. Now, I do need to make sure I get some correct information out there. Over on Twitter last week, I pretty much burst with happiness about PlayAsia showing that there was a double pack of Yggdra and Gloria Union happening in English. Everyone was pleased as punch. We were all celebrating, high-fiving each other, but unfortunately... That listing was a mistake. Kind of heartbreaking, there's no English. I could see two people actually used our links to order it, so if you're one of those two people, be sure to cancel your order. I wouldn't want you getting something wrongly, and to those who were celebrating and thinking about getting their orders in, well, now you know not to bother. You can all go and run a cold bath and go cry in it like I did. All right, sadly, there's no uh, community spotlight this week. I know I've been inconsistent with it recently, but I've just had a lot of stuff going on. My job started back up again, delving back into the misery, but mainly just because my daughter was unwell for two days with fevers and stuff. She's 
she's all right now she's on the mend uh, but it was a very stressful 48 hours with very little sleep alongside working like the new semester at my work it's just been so busy and so tired and that's why the silent hill video didn't happen yet either but it should be this week at least for my patreon if you want to head over there and support me in that way but yeah i will save your snazzy pictures for next week don't send me any more even though i'm sure i will get a billion splatoon pictures all right i hope you enjoyed this episode of let's get physical special thanks to our executive producers as always dane wilkinson God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, Jcross7776, Elisa, Punky Dooster, Cartoon Swarm, Robotech, Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Issa V, Mental Traveler, Grantsert, Viz, Jennifer M, Instacritic, Precision Plague, and Katacha. Plus you. Yeah, you watching right now. If you watched all the way through, leave me a candy emoji in the comments in honor of Miracle Snack Shop. Yes, be there. Well, I was going to say Thursday, but no, it's now. Now, go there now, pre-order it, and use our links and our discount code. If you want to. I'm not forcing you to. I know you, you might not like visual novels. It's cool. I'm ranting. I've just not had a lot of sleep. Take care.